We are basically living and breathing PTC control and now we support Rust Pivot Game. We have had that request many, 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 many times and we are so proud to now show you how that works with the PTC Pro. Of course, PTC Pro in this lovely new blue and black design, we are really proud about that. It's so awesome. It looks so great. Um, of course, that's not the only controller that can do it. We have the PTC Extreme, we have PTC Fly, even PTC Wiz and the Rack Fusion Live that all has joysticks and they'll support Rust Pivot Cam and all the other brands that we also um, support, like uh, yeah, PTC Optics, um, NewTek, Lumen, Sony cameras, various sorts, Agile PTC camera, kind of funny, weather resistant camera, that's that's really cool as well, Minray, uh, Avonic, um, you name it, and I forget some, and uh, yeah, I mean, even PTC heads from Kessler or Rushworks. So there are a lot of options for you with our PTC controllers. But in this episode, I'm gonna focus on the Rust Pivot Cam for you. Now, um, it's really just showing that, that it works because you can see it's connected here. We have, oh, s sorry, sorry. Um, well, we have the camera. You, you trust me now? Okay, I'm pulling the joystick, yes. And you can also see I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out. Yes, it works. That's lovely. Kind of as expected. I c oh, I can tilt. Yeah. Awesome. Now, of course, the coolest thing about Skyhoy controllers is really not that you can use the joystick because you can buy any cheap PTC controller and you'll do the same thing. What we put a lot of pride into is really supporting parameters in the cameras. So we looked into the manual. We looked at the list of aperture values, shutter speeds, gain settings that is in this camera, and we put it all into the control. So that's what we take pride in doing. We want to have a user experience, which is as close as possible to what it would have been if Ross put out their own controller, which as far as I know, they didn't do at this point in time. So. It's really what is in that menu. Now, uh, let's go a little bit closer because we want to see the action on this beautiful panel. Now, uh, we typically divide the panel, the, despite which camera, or no matter which camera you're using, into a menu section and a section with uh, presets. So I have now exposure mode right here. And if I turn the exposure mode away from auto to manual instead, you can see that we are now having a flickering image, probably because my shutter speed is not really good with my light in this room. So if I'm changing the shutter speed a little bit, you can see I can sort of stabilize that. Uh, that was not good, but 100, 1 over 100 was great. Okay, so I want to adjust the iris a little bit too, so we can compensate for, for the light there and maybe adjust the gain slightly. Yes, okay, it works. Um, so that's really exposure mode. And of course you have, uh, apart from auto, you have manual mode. You see these values. We're actually pulling them from the camera. So um, these values are not guesswork. We know what is in the camera and we are gonna read that out and show on the display. This is how we usually do it if possible. Um, shutter speed, priority, gain, sorry, Irish priority. Sometimes we have uh, gain priority. In this camera, we don't. So we're just gonna stick with manual mode for this demonstration. Uh, I think that works out fairly well. Now, if we go to white balance mode, we have a white balance menu. It's currently on auto, but I can of course select indoor. We have outdoor for white balance. One push uh, uh, white balance, I can press and hold. And well, we really don't see any difference on the display, but it did trigger that one. And of course we can do manual. So in manual mode, we have access directly to the uh, red gain and the blue gain values. So if I'm gonna change those, you can see I can really mess up the image beyond recognition. So that's probably mostly for demonstration. If I press and hold, it is usually gonna reset these values, uh, not necessarily to a meaningful value. I think actually we need to go down to 64 to uh, neutralize this effect. And uh, I think we are hitting it mm, more or less around there. Yeah, there we go. Yes, uh, but still, I may prefer to have the white balance that the camera detected itself. Well, basically, those parameters are meant for you to do the shading. So you can imagine how those white balance parameters are mapped to encoders on an RCP and the and, uh, shading operator will feel right at home with that camera. So we move on to color and you can see a saturation parameter can be adjusted here. So we basically see we can give a lot of color. We can also remove all the color from the picture. Move on to uh, image. We have uh, backlight um, or we have sharpness right here. Um, the, the backlight feature will be depending on the exposure mode. So I think if I move over to auto mode and we go back here, then we should see backlight. Uh, we can turn that on and off. 
and uh, we should probably provide some color to the picture again like that okay it's a little bit overexposed right now and that's probably because of the backlight setting so let's just remove that one and we are good again sharpness is overly uh, over applied at the moment but my point is really to show you that the, all these things are available well sometimes we can put stuff onto the uh, u user buttons right here so we have user button one where you can turn on and off the power you don't want to have me do that in this demonstration but we can flip the image so there you go, flipping the image in one and the other direction, depending on where it's mounted. In user menu two, we do not see anything. We don't see anything in the other ones, except in the fourth menu where we have put the manual focus uh, mode. So let's just zoom a little bit more and see if we can adjust focus on this guy. You can actually see I'm using this knob on the RCP to adjust focus. Unfortunately, I'm too close to the fruit to really get you a sharp picture. So. I would need to zoom out a little bit. But you saw the effect. So you can map focus onto an encoder on any of our controllers and take a look at the PDC Extreme because on that one you have a roller wheel for your thumb, which is really cool if you are a professional grade PDC operator and you want it to sit right there in your left hand where you used to have it, including a zoom rocker, which is so awesome because <sighs> custom design. <laughs> And that makes us proud. Okay, why not show you the labels? So, uh, because I didn't mention presets. And we have preset banks on the controller as well. So if I go forth and back here, you can see I have presets of 1 to 10 or 11 to 20. And uh, they are situated on these buttons. So, okay, let's uh, press and hold this one. And we are storing a preset in number one. And now uh, I'm zooming out. A little bit come on yes thank you and then i'm pressing and holding this one which will give me a preset in number two so now i can recall this one uh let me see if i press that we are recalling that and i'm now recalling the other one i think there's a limit to how quick you can do it or oh, the camera is really reacting slightly slowly on recalling presets but yeah, there you go. Now, what I wanted to show you is that we can label the presets. So we can decide to change the camera selector on the lower row for a preset selector, but that requires that we do configuration. So this is now turning into a, uh, an advanced section in this video, but it's so much fun. So I want to do it anyway. And um, we bring up the Skyhoy firmware application. In the firmware application, you want to press, uh, depending on what, if your computer is on your local network, you can access the camera directly. Sorry, not the camera, the controller. So I'm now pressing local configuration because I'm so lucky to be on the same network as my controller. So I can enable the uh, on controller interface to do this configuration. And I'm now going to press uh, the button called, uh, well, P1 and uh, P2, and then I'm going to press the button called Cam1, which is my camera selector right here. All right. And I'm going to swap those functions around. All right. Uh, well, I want to cam have camera selector number two also. So I'm now going to um, also remove some of all these. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, more easy to see for you now. Um, OK, so button Cam1 and button Cam2 has um, camera number one and camera two selected. And down here for the presets, you can see I have select preset number one. And if I hold down the shift key, I am selecting preset number 11, recalling setting and so forth. I think um, what I want to do now is to copy this guy and insert it up here like that. And then uh, I could now copy actions from camera two and insert right here. But I, then I need to change this one back to camera one. OK, and then I copy this action and insert right there. And now I copy this action and insert right here. So there's no swap function. I need to do that by, you know, intelligently moving these things around. So let's see what happens when I press save. Now look at the controller. And there you go, it's now swapped. And you can see in the display it says camera one preset, camera two preset. And up here we actually have a camera selector now on these two buttons. So it's lighting up because I have camera number one selected and I don't have a camera two. So this one does nothing except that it's disabling access to this camera. But I'm now pressing this one and now we're back to camera number one right here. And uh, that's great. Now we want to see preset recall. So when I press um, this button, I'm recalling preset number two we made just before. And now I press this one and we're going back. So the cool thing about labeling uh, using the display buttons with presets is coming now because we can apply labels to them. 
So if I now go into my configuration again for these two buttons, you'll see um, I'm able to select something called label preset times camera, label preset times camera. I'm going to select that for both of them. And um, then I'm going to scroll a little bit because I have something called labels right here where I can define a number of rows and columns. And I have, uh, in this case, only one camera. So it's fine enough to just have one row and then select uh, two columns. So this means, uh, no, let's just imagine that I had f two cameras and let's say five presets, just to be fair. Oh, well, eight presets because I have eight buttons with displays. That's... Uh, maybe even better. Okay, so now I have one row for camera number one. I have another row from camera number two because of course presets on two different cameras will be different angles and therefore I need to have labels for all of them. I'm now typing in a label which is for preset number one. I think it was really close. So that will be uh, very okay close. I'm just gonna write close. Okay, so that's really close on, on this one. And then on the second, I'm going to write far. And now I'm saving. And it's so interesting to see what happens on these two buttons. Yes, there you see. Now let's go close. We're already there. We are now going far, close, far, close. And that works for any camera you can integrate with our PTC Pro or the PTC Fly or the PTC Extreme, where you have even more buttons with displays. That's what we really did with that controller, giving you so much flexibility now ross pivot cam ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoy it and um that we can serve you with cool ptc controllers